outside. I'm free. I'm gonna jump off the edge. Ah! It actually let me jump off the edge. Oh my goodness, it loops. It loops, you guys. Oh, I'm sure that's not gonna be a fundamental part of a great variety of puzzles. That is so cool. These are all looped. This isn't infinitely tall and short. It's just a slice that is repeated vertically. That's so cool. There's a door on the ceiling. You're standing on the floor. You cannot jump. You cannot climb. You step onto the wall. The wall becomes the floor. The door is straight ahead. You walk through. The platform is across a gap. You cannot jump. You cannot reach it. You walk off the edge of the world. You fall down a long ways, forwards and down onto the platform far below. You are on the other side of the gap. You can reach the button above your head, but it will not be pressed. You learn that you can only interact with objects that share your gravity, and others remain frozen where they are. You step onto the wall. Manifold Garden is a beautifully simple game. You explore a minimalist world where you can choose which direction is down at any time, solving spatial puzzles using colored blocks. You encounter locked doors and open them with buttons, blocks, or water. You discover places which are covered in a black substance that retreats when you approach it, but by solving the puzzles, you can remove the strange goo and restore the beauty of the world. The game is brilliantly made. The visuals, though simple, are stunning, reminiscent of old science fiction book covers, and there's even a built-in camera mode with filters and effects you can use to take artistic screenshots of the world. The music and ambient sound are beautiful. The game teaches you how to play it, how all of the mechanics work, without ever using a single word of text. The puzzles are relatively straightforward once you get your head around the gravity flipping mechanics, but challenging enough to keep you interested. You can reach the end of the game in four or five hours, which might seem short for its price tag of 20 US dollars or 16 euros or pounds, but, well, you might find that it has more replayability than you would expect. If you play the game on Steam, or another platform with an achievement system, you will find that when you've completed the game, several achievements are still locked. There is more to this game, it seems, than first meets the eye. Very minor spoilers lie ahead, so pause this video now if you'd like to experience the game unspoiled, and come back once you've completed a few areas. You pass through a hallway, and notice out of the corner of your eye that there's a door outside. A door you never find the other side of. You approach a large, magnificent door that requires a yellow block to open. But there are no yellow blocks here. There's no way to get one here. The path ahead is illuminated. Your intended destination is clear. On a whim, you turn to the right, to take in the beauty of the architecture around you. You spot something. Another door you can't open. Through its slits, you see a button on the other side. You never find it. Some of these areas are enormous, but they're nothing but repeating patterns. You might consider exploring a bit, but quickly lose interest. It's time-consuming and fruitless. Until once, you discover a door. A door set away from the clearly marked path to the next level. A door with a button you can press. A door you can open. The first time you complete Manifold Garden, you've probably followed the simple path from beginning to end, but along the way, you may have spotted some doors you couldn't open. Perhaps, like me, you expected to find the way back to them as you played through the rest of the game, but never did. Maybe it nags at the back of your mind. Maybe you start playing again, exploring more carefully this time. The game has achievements on platforms that support them like Steam, and it is impossible to get all of them in a single run. One of them in particular is puzzling at first glance. To complete the game without placing a single god cube. The god cubes are these freaky things. Twisted neon forms that look like they swallowed a blacklight. They warp everything around them, and when placed in the correct location, they sprout forth into a new part of the world. 
Most of it is just some aesthetically pleasing decoration, but part of the architecture they create is a door to the next part of the game. What this achievement tells the player is that there is another way. There is more to this game than you realized. It turns out there are plenty of other doors cleverly hidden in some of the levels. You wouldn't notice them if you didn't go exploring areas that seem like nothing more than an endless repetition. And even when you do, they are not easy to find. Most of the doors you'll find can't even be open from your side. But now and then, you'll hit the jackpot and be presented with a button. These doors lead to additional areas of the game with additional puzzles. And these puzzles, overall, are far more difficult than the ones you've solved so far. Sometimes they require you to retrieve cubes from other parts of the game, something which can be tricky to manage and requires some creative solutions. When solved, they open shortcuts between the main levels. Altogether, these shortcuts can connect you from the start of the game to the very end, all without ever placing a god cube. At least, I assume they do. I've played this game for about 20 hours so far, and I've only found a few of the hidden shortcuts myself. There are guides, of course, that explain where to go and what to do, but personally I refuse to use them. Exploring the Manifold Garden is pleasant and relaxing and entertaining. Making a discovery is extremely satisfying, and if it takes me another 50 hours to finally solve the last puzzle, I'll consider it 50 hours well spent. Talk about getting your money's worth out of a game. There's just something about Manifold Garden that speaks to my very soul. Wait. It's a freaking TARDIS. It's a freaking TARDIS, man. This game is awesome. 10,000 thumbs up. I'll grow a bunch more just so that I can put them up for this game. This is very, very cool. There's a long staircase going up. You crane your neck upwards to see the wall it leads towards. The longer you walk, the more you feel like you aren't going up, you're going down. You're walking towards the floor. You fall. You fall and fall and fall. You drift away from the platforms which whip past you again and again. You listen to the wind rushing by. You can land whenever you feel like it. There's no fall damage here. There's no pain. You land softly on the floor. On a whim, you step up and turn it into the wall. There is no up. There is no down. After several straight hours of exploring the game, you turn it off and go to bed. You dream that the world has become the Manifold Garden. You walk up buildings. You stand on the ceiling of a skyscraper and look up at the floor. You wake up. Way back in university, I had an anthropology professor who kept an odd map of the world on his office wall, one with the South Pole at the top and the North Pole at the bottom. The first time anyone walked in there, they'd ask him why his map was upside down. He'd tell them, boom, look again. It's not upside down, he'd say. The text on the map is right side up. Boom. But it's got South at the top, each student would say, and he'd grin the mildly obnoxious grin of any cheeky university professor about to impart an important life lesson on a student, and ask them, why shouldn't it be? Most students didn't get the lesson right away. They'd argue that North was up, plain and simple. And he'd patiently explain that really, there was no such thing as up on a globe. Up was relative. We expected North to be at the top for no real reason other than that's how we'd always seen it before. There was no reason why the South Pole couldn't be the top of the world. That was over 15 years ago, but it's always stuck with me. It was the first time I'd ever truly considered how much of what we take for granted about reality is really just a perspective we've seen so often that we forget it isn't a universal truth. There is no such thing as up. Up only has meaning relative to where you're standing. It's only a game. And truth be told, coming back to reality after playing a game like this can lead to certain... frustrations. But it is a pleasant escape from the real world. 
and an excellent tool for challenging and overcoming some of your preconceptions about reality. In a world where opinions are touted more and more often as facts, where certain perspectives are privileged above others and some are discounted altogether, I think we could all use to practice flipping the room on its head every once in a while and walking on the ceiling. Right, it's recording. I'm a professional. <laughs> uh, so hi everyone, I'm Ari. Um, the rest of the video is all edited and put together and ready to go. Um, this game, Manifold Garden, has become very special to me, very meaningful to me. Uh, it came at a time when I was honestly having some pretty serious real-life troubles that I was trying to work through, and um, it helped me. This game somehow was just exactly what I needed to get my head in a better space, and it really means a lot to me. It was released on Steam on October 20th. Uh, October, yeah, October, October 20th. I had an advanced copy, and the plan was that I was going to release this video on release day. It is now December 31st, 2020. Uh, which, you will note, is more than two months late. Uh, what happened? I had a script and I started getting footage and stuff, and I realized there's a whole bunch of stuff that I had missed, and the script I had written wasn't good enough. And so I needed to start again. And so I scrapped it and I started again. And then that sort of kept happening. And, and it kept just sort of getting worse and worse. It was sort of like... The longer I worked on it, the more I felt like the video I was making wasn't going to be good enough. And I was getting really frustrated, because I am a writer. Like, that is my day job. I make a living and pay the rent with writing. I put things into words, that's what I do. And this time, there was something about the game that I just couldn't put into words. Try though I may. And that was a little bit, honestly, a little bit disconcerting, because, I mean, that's what I do, right? That, that's, that's my thing. And I couldn't do it this time. And it, because the game is important to me, I really wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to communicate all that I needed to communicate about this game in the video so that people would understand why it mattered so much to me. And in the end, I kind of, kind of got to a point where I was like, maybe that's all I need to say, right? Like, maybe it's enough for me to say, there's something about this game I can't put into words. I, a professional writer who does words for a living, don't have the words for it. And I mean, your mileage may vary. I'm not necessarily guaranteeing that this game will be life-changing to every single person who comes across it. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't. Um, but it was really important to me. Even, even if... This game doesn't change your life and isn't super meaningful for you. Um, you know, it's a good game. <laughs> I think that's the one thing I can guarantee. It's beautifully made, beautifully designed. Um, I don't usually use this word when I'm reviewing a video game, but I would go so far as to call this one a masterpiece. Honestly, I have no notes. I have no critique. I have no thoughts, no suggestions. They did it. <laughs> if the visual style appeals to you, if the puzzle solving appeals to you, if the sort of philosophical stuff that I got into in this video appeals to you at all, um, you should just get Manifold Garden. You should just get this game. It is extremely good, and I think you will not regret getting this game. <laughs>